Hey everyone and welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about Telvin Grid System. We will look at how we can use Telvin CSS to build a decent and responsive design in the application. So let's first talk about what is Telvin Grid System. As you all know, the CSS Grid Layout modules offers a grid-based layout system with rows and columns, making it easier to design a web pages without having to use loads and positions. Each row can have multiple columns. In Telvin CSS, to make a row, you just need to specify grid class to the element and then you have to specify how many columns you want in the row. So right now, in this design, we have two columns in this row. Telvin CSS use grid calls and class to create columns. The asterisk here indicates the number of columns. You can specify any number of columns here inside this row. If you want two columns, you can pass here two. If you want four columns, you can pass here four and so on. So using this technique, you can make your own grid layout. In a pity, let's dive in in the practical example. I'm using React app to demonstrate Telvin grid system. So I already initialized this application with Telvin CSS. And on the left side, we have the Telvin CSS documentation. And right here, I have the React application running on the local host 3000. Now I already have some styling to this React application inside this index.css file. Here, I initialized the Telvin CSS with this Telvin directives. Then I added here a font and specify that font to all the elements. Then specify body and specify the background color to the body. And then I select the descendant div of the grid class and specify color, text align center, font size, and padding. I'm going to specify all these properties to the descendant div of this grid class. Now, just out of that, I'm going to back to the app.js right here. And here I'm going to create a simple grid layout. So to make a grid layout in Telvin CSS, you just need to create a division tag and inside that you have grid items. So here inside this div, I'm going to specify a class. We need to first initialize this div as grid container. So to do that, we specify here a class name. So I'm simply going to say here class name and then we specify grid class name. Using this grid class name, we initialize this div as a grid container and inside this grid container, we have grid items. So let's create that grid items here. So I'm going to say here div and then specify 0, 1 here to indicate this is the first div. Then I'm going to duplicate this and specify here 0, 3 and 0, 2 to indicate this is the first, second, and third div. Let me save the changes and we are going to have the result what I want. But let me just add some background color to these divs and add my styling to it. Now let me specify some background color so we can clearly see all these divisions. So what I'm going to do is right down here, I'm going to create a function to randomly specify color to this div. So we create here get random color and then specify here a return statement. And this return statement is going to return a random color from this function, something like this. And then I'm going to copy this get random color and then specify that to this first div. So to specify that, I'm simply going to specify here first style. Inside this style, I'm going to specify object and then specify background color like this and then specify the get random color. So I'm going to first add a template string and inside that, I'm going to call dollar in the curly braces. I'm going to specify the get random color function. Now this function is going to return the random color and specify that to the background color. So you can see I'm going to have this background color to this division tag. Let me do the same for all these division tags. So let me copy this and then specify that to all these divs, something like this. So this will specify random color to this division tag. Now just out of that, now you don't have to focus on this get random color function. So this class is going to initialize this div as a grid container. What if you want to make two columns layout? You want two columns in a single row. In that case, you can add here a class called grid calls two. Now, can you find out the small mistake inside this code? Why the styling of this index.css is not applied to this division tag? The reason behind this is here I have a small n. If I specify here a capital N, save the changes, you can see I'm going to have all the classes to this division tag. Now, in React, these all are JSX. So, you need to consider these attributes as properties. So now you can see on the first row, I have two columns 
and on the second row i have one column this is because this grid layout is going to create two column layout to make a four column layout you just have to change this column to four so this will add four column layout inside this grid you can see now because i don't have the fourth div here if i create the fourth div then that will create the fourth column you can notice now because i have this get random color background color to this division tag whenever i save the changes it will automatically change the color of this division tag just out of that you can notice i don't have any gap between all these divs to add some gap between all these divs you can simply add here a gap class gap one gap one is going to specify four pixel space between this division tag when i save the changes you can see it will add some space between this div now let's make 12 column layout to understand this grid more easily so if i create here 12 columns something like this and you can see now i have 12 column layout and now if i want to put all these divs in the single row i'm simply going to put here 12. this is because i have 12 division tag and i wanted to make 12 column grid system so i specify here call 12. so this will just put all the divs in the single row you can notice now whenever i change this grid column if i specify here 4 delvin will automatically move all the remaining columns on the next row you can notice i'm only going to have four columns on the single row and other columns on the next rows you can do the same with the row class as well so let's suppose that you want four rows inside this grid container you're simply going to say here grid rows four this is going to create four rows inside this grid system you can notice and now because i have more than four division tag inside this grid that is why i'm going to have the result something like this but now i can use here a class called grid flow column to automatically arrange all these divs inside a row let me save this you can see this will automatically arrange all these divs inside a row we have four rows and three columns now suppose i want only five column in a row using this grid flow call it will equally divide all these division tags and specify that to this row now let's suppose that i want five column in a row in that case i'm simply going to say here grid calls four and i say the changes and now if i duplicate this div one more time you can see now this div moves to the next row now once we understand how we can align all these grid items one by one in a row let's take a look at how we can add different width to these grid columns now suppose i want to span this first column keep in mind css grid lines starts at one not zero so a full width element in a 12 column grid would start at one and end at 13. so if you have 12 column grid layout it starts from this first gap and end right here at the end of this 12 column so now let's suppose that you want to span this first column till this third column i want to specify the width of the second and this third column to this first column to do that i'm simply going to specify here a class name so i'm going to say here class name is equal to and then specify here call span three this indicates i want to specify three column width to this first div when i save the changes you can see it will take the width of three column and specify that to this first column so this will take all three column space so call span one indicates the default spanning call span two will take the width of the second column the call span three will take the space of three columns and so on just after that you can also use call start n and call end n utilities to make an element start or end at the nth grid line so now suppose you want to add empty space in the grid you can then use call start n to start the column from a specific column and add some space to the column let's suppose that you want to span this column and add a one column space to this first column i want to add two column width to this first column and start this column from the second column i want to specify empty space right here in that case i'm going to first specify here call span two so this will just take two column width to this first div and then i want to start this column from the second column so i can simply specify here call start two so this will just start this first column from the second column 
starting point. And I say this changes, you can see it will start the first column from the second column starting point and it will add some space at the starting. You can do the same with call end. So let's suppose if I space over here call end 8, then you can notice this first column starts from the 8 number of columns. So if I get rid of this grid rows 4 and if I add here 12 column layout to understand this call end 8, and if I increase the size, then you can notice this first column starts from the 8 column. You will understand this better if you specify this to the last division tag. If I copy this and specify that to the last div, and if I add here call and 8, and then let me get it off this span and specify here the default value 1, and then I'm going to get it off this call span 2. So now this call and 8 is going to start from the 8 column and add 8 column space right here. So if you count here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, then you can notice this 12 column starts from the 8 column and it will start from behind, not from the starting point. This is just the opposite of call start n. This means if I specify here 12, say the changes, you can notice this will add 12 column space and add this division tag at 13th column. Now you can do the same thing with row call utility class. So let's suppose that you specify here row span 2 and if I specify here grid rows 4 then you can see the first column is going to take the height of 2 columns. If I increase this to 4 it will take the height of 4 rows and obviously you can use row start n and row and end utility class to add some space to these rows. So let's suppose that you specify row span 2 and you want to start this row from the second row then you're simply going to say here row start 2 so this will just start this row from the second row you can see now we have the first column on the second row and Delvin is automatically align all these columns one by one we can also use grid flow utility class to control how auto placement algorithm works for the grid layout to understand this class we need to add call span to the column let's suppose that you have three column grid layout. So let's suppose that we have three columns grid layout, something like this. Let me get rid of this class, save these changes, and now to the first div here. Let's suppose if I specify class name call span two, and I'm going to do the same if I specify here call span two to the second div as well. Then you can notice I'm going to have the result something like this. I'm going to have here the empty space after this first column. This is because so if the width of the second column more than the size of this space, then Telvin will automatically move this second column on the next line. To solve this problem, we can simply use here a class called grid flow row dense class. So this will automatically align all these items. You can notice we have one, then we have the third column, then we have the second column, and then we have the fourth column this will fill this empty space with a different column you can also use the auto feature of tailwind so let's suppose that you want to specify auto columns to this grid you can simply specify here a class called auto calls auto you're going to have this result but if you specify here grid flow call say the changes you can see tailwind will automatically align all your columns but tailwind has this auto class by default but you can also use auto calls max and auto call mean to specify minimum and maximum classes. You specify here max. So this will specify the max width to all these grid items. And if you specify here mean, then this is going to specify the minimum width to all these grid items. Now let's talk about the important topic of grid, which is responsive layout. Now let's suppose that you want to make this layout responsive for various devices. If I get rid of all this right from here, and now I want to make this layout completely responsive, then I can use different breakpoint utility classes of Tailwind. Right inside this layout, I want four columns for large device, two columns for medium device, and one column for small device. For that, I can use Tailwind responsive utility classes. When you open your inspect tool of Chrome, then you will notice here you have different breakpoints here. Using these breakpoints, we can change the layout of this gray system. To understand this, 
You have to first back to the Delvin CSS documentation. Click on the Get Started and click on this screen. Here you can find different breakpoints of the Delvin CSS screen. Let me just explain these breakpoints. This SM640 pixel means if the viewport is greater than 640 pixel, then specify all the classes of this breakpoint to the element. If the viewport is for medium size of devices, means if it is equal to 768 pixel or greater than that, then specify all the Delvin classes to this medium size of devices. To understand this breakpoint, let me just show you a very simple example. So I'm going to say here SM grid call one. So this will specify one column to the small device. When I say the changes for the small device, I have one column. And now if I add here MD grid calls two, and when I say the changes, you can easily find the difference. If I increase this viewport, you can see this will change the grid layout. When the viewport is greater than 768 pixel, I'm going to have two column layout. This is because the breakpoint of this MD is 768 pixel. And if I want to specify four column layout to the large device, I'm simply going to say here LG grid calls four. So for the large devices, I want four columns. So I'm going to save the changes. And when I increase this viewport, and if the viewport is for large devices, I'm going to have four column layout here. So this breakpoints indicates the device's breakpoint. SM for small devices, MD for medium devices, and LG for large devices. So for the large device, I want four columns. So I'm going to say here LG grid columns four. For the medium size of devices, I want I want two columns only. So I specify here MD grid calls two. And for the small device, I want only one column. So I'm going to say here SM grid column. You are not limited to use only these breakpoints inside your Telvin class. You can easily customize it according to your need. I have a complete Telvin CSS course on this channel. You can find more about customizing Telvin CSS there. These classes will apply from minimum to the maximum width. It means from the small devices starting from 640 pixel. If the viewport is 640 pixel or greater than that, I'm going to specify one column to the grid layout. So it means if the viewport is greater than 640 pixel and less than 768 pixel, I want one column. When the viewport is less than 768 pixel, I'm going to have one column here. But if I increase the viewport and if it exceeds 768 pixel, I'm going to have two column layout here. And if the viewport is less than 1024 pixel, I'm going to have this two column layout inside this grid layout. So if I increase this viewport, I'm going to have two column layout, but if the viewport is greater than 1024 pixel, I'm going to change this layout to four columns. You can notice. You can create many beautiful and amazing designs with grid system. So I hope you understand how to work with grid layout in Telvin CSS. If you have any question, you can comment me down. If you find anything useful, make sure to press the like button, share this video with your friends, subscribe for more latest videos. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.